miracle walker, King of Kings. Hey, I worship you. Your majesty is forevermore. Oh, Kolobaya. Wonderful God. Wonderful God. Miracle work. You in God's kingdom. Good evening, sir. Prophet Melody. Good evening, sir. Thanks for tuning in, sir. God bless you, sir. Your majesty is forevermore. Jeffrey Lewis, good evening, sir. Thanks for tuning in. God bless you, sir. Good to have you. Important one, I worship you. Your majesty. Is forevermore. Glorious God, wonderful. Equate Ajaye, my very good friend. Thanks for joining, sir. God bless you, sir. You in God's kingdom, help whom worship you. With majesty is forevermore. Who mean important one? We worship you. Hey, your majesty is forevermore. Sandra. Good evening, my thanks for joining. God bless you. We worship you. Hey, the majesty is forevermore. Hey, you are worthy of my prayer. Oh, 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 you are worthy of the best book in my dear wife. Thanks for joining. Oh, easy. You are worthy of a praise. Oh, Kalabayana. Oh, 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 wherever you are, you just dream to worship God. You just begin to worship God. Just begin to worship God. Begin to worship Him. Leko Shana, easy. You are worthy of our praise. Oh, 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 you are worthy of my praise. Jesus, you are worthy of our praise. Can a believer lose the salvation of part four? Oh, you are worthy of my praise. Jesus, you are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our praise. Yahweh, you are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of a praise, Yahweh. You are worthy of. Tag somebody, invite someone. Oko shana la ya, a worthy. My 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 my. A God is awesome. Na na shane kalogo tayama. Oh, Coco Shaye Calabo, 
You can pray it on, pray it on with me. Oh, le 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 lu kayama no si agaga. Oh, kaka logo. Yeah, koko se yaga go go lama. You are worthy of a prayer. Ah, halo koko si yaga galo. E balo ya ne kogo ta. Oko le mene ya. Koskaduya, oko tele yamagu. Oh, let me replay it. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. My prayer, Mimi, Dave. Thanks for joining. God bless you, man. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming in. Keep coming in. We're going to be blessed tonight. This is part four of this series we have been talking about. Can they believe I lose the salvation? Let more people come in. Where we just worship God, worship God, worship God, worship God. Wherever you are, praise God. God is in you. God is not far from you. He's in you. So you can worship Him wherever you are right now. Just begin to worship Him. His presence is in your midst. Is in you, is in you, is in you. So just begin to worship him. Where I have more people coming. Oh, Kobaya. Ah. Reverend Mike. Thanks for joining, sir. God bless you, sir. I love you, sir. Oh, Kokota. Oh, Kokota. Worship him, worship him, worship him. Forevermore. Oh, glorious God. Thanks for sharing, Pastor Mike. God bless you, sir. Love you, sir. Just keep on sharing the video. Share the video. Tag somebody. Share it. Share it. Share it. Share the video, okay? It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Praise God. It's a blessing. It's a blessing to you. See, see, see. You don't need to be deceived. Again. What you need is knowledge. It's knowledge. That is why we are taking time, taking our time to, 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 to bring knowledge of God's word to you. So that you will know who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ. And what Christ is doing through you, so that you will not be carried away with every wind of doctrine. Praise God, you will not be deceived with every wind of doctrine. Okay, so many people need to be blessed too. So just share it, share it, share it. I don't know, many people like sharing things that does not glorify the name of God. Praise God, but things that glorify the name of God and things that's going to help a fellow believer like you, we don't like sharing it. Just don't be like that. Share the video, okay? Let it be a blessing to somebody. Please, a blessing to somebody. Oh, Shagaga. Oh, my friend Kelly Osegi, thanks for joining us. God bless you. Ah, Reverend Godwin, thanks for joining us, Apostle. Thank you, sir. Progress, Eribo, thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. Just worship him wherever you are. I worship. Your majesty is forevermore. O many potent one, we worship you. Just worship him. Majesty is forevermore. Oh. We worship Alamoshaya, your majesty is forevermore. It's forevermore. Is it you are worthy of a praise? Oh, oh, oh. He is he is the king of kings and the lord of lords. He is he is the urban of seven of mercy. He is the urban of all bar. He is the easy of all easy. Uh -huh. Lord, you are king, Lord. You are king. You are king. 
You are King, Lord. You are Father. Thanks for joining. Tie a lucky. Please don't go, don't go offline. Just stay with me. Okay? Exactly. I will start now. After this very track, we're going to the topic. Okay? Can a believer lose his salvation? Hayo koko lebanadia. Worthy of a praise. You know, you know, there is this joy. There is this joy that money cannot bear. That is in us. Hallelujah. There is this joy that material things cannot give us. That is in us. It's called the joy of the Lord. Ha ah, ah, ha ah. ha. And this joy can only pop up with the knowledge of God's word. Hallelujah. Yahweh. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Progress. Oh, Erebu. Good evening. Oh, Coco Balamaya. You are worthy of a praise. Yahweh. You are worthy of a praise. Oh, 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 you are worthy of a praise. Talama. Kayana Goko. Zele ma goko lama Eye ma do koko skanda yo Just worship him Okolo ya malade koko tana Okoko le bayano Ezu koko kola banea Hello kayo Ono benedu zogo lama de ya koko teha Ozo koko la men e gogo, gogo ya bele madu. E koso na ye koko la madia, o koko la ba ya na 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 no sha. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God forevermore. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once again, I welcome you all. Praise God for tuning with me. Praise God. We have been we have been discussing can a believer lose his or her salvation. That's what we have been discussing about. Praise God. We have had the part one. We have had the part two. We have had the part three. And by the grace of God, we we'll continue from where we stop today. Praise God. You know. I want you to know that, like I always said, the everything, most of the questions people ask concerning the things of God are not a matter of yes or no. Praise God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It's no matter of yes or no. Like somebody will ask you, will they believe I go to air? It's not a matter of yes or no. Somebody will ask you, uh, is one saved, stay forever? It's not a matter of yes or no. Praise God. Is a something we have to answer scripturally. Praise God. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's, it's something we have to answer scripturally so uh, we have been looking at how were you saved in the first place praise god because knowing how you were saved in the first place eh, that should answer the question if you can lose your salvation or not even though we have a lot of scripture that I already told us we cannot lose our salvation we have a lot of scripture in uh, a lot of verses a lot of chapters in the bible that give us internal security guarantee you know like the question i only ask if you are not sure that Jesus Christ will save you to the end, then why are you serving Jesus? I don't understand. Praise God. Why are you serving Jesus? Or is it people that will ask you to bring money, to do this, that is... I don't understand. If you are not sure that Jesus will save you to the end, then why are you serving him? Why? Praise God. Why are you serving him? Praise God. Like I always said, I'm not going to serve a God that can't save me to the end. Hallelujah. Even John 3.16 that we quote eh, is enough for you to understand the meaning of eternal salvation, eternal life. Let's go to John 3.16 this evening. Where is my Bible? Let's go to John 3.16. If you are with your Bible, just turn with me. Let's go to John 3.16. Before we go to John 3.16, there's a question. Uh, this guy, uh, a guy called Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. Uh, and it was a teacher of the law. 
There's a question he asked Jesus in the book of John 3. I would like us to see that question. Now, if you read from verse 1, let's just take it from verse 1. From verse 1 said, there was a man of the Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, the word Rabbi means teacher. We know that thou art a teacher from God, for no man can do those miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Praise God. Now, this man could acknowledge that Jesus does miracle because God is with him. Hallelujah. And that is the reason we do miracle also, because God is with us. Hallelujah. And once you should understand that, let me uh, divert a little bit. Praise God. Once you should understand that miracles is not what you pay for. You know, I was praying for a sister. A sister called me in Italy the other day. He said, uh, I am sick. I have sold a lot of seed. I have done this. I have done this. Yet I, have not, I am not aware. Praise God. Now, it's not wrong appreciating the man of God. Praise God from your own mind, from your own will. But it's wrong for a man of God to charge you to receive a miracle or to receive healing. It's wrong. It's demonic. It's unscriptural. Praise God. Now, what the lady said to me he said, um, "Praise God." He said, "But I, I have sold a lot of seed. I have given people told me to pay a lot of money so that I can receive my healing. I could not receive my healing yet." You know what I told her? I said, "That is the main reason you could not receive your healing because you taught money, eh?" You thought you could, you could use your money to bribe God so that you can receive your healing. Praise God. Let me tell you, there's nothing you can do to impress God. There's nothing you can do to impress God. Hallelujah. You can never impress God. Amen. If like, thank God for the ministry of prayer. I believe prayer. Pastor Mike is here. Pastor Mike, no, we pray a lot. Praise God. Thank God, thank God for the ministry of fasting. Fasting is good. Praise God. But we, we, we can, these things can never impress God. We don't pray to impress God. We don't fast to impress God. Praise God. If our prayer fasting will not change God, praise God, it changes us. Hallelujah. It changes us. So, prayer fasting does not change us. So, there's nothing you will do to impress God. Your dancing will not impress God. Your singing will not impress God. Nothing you do to impress God. You know, this is the most difficult thing that religious man don't want to hear. So you mean all my fasting, all my prayer, all my money I'll be giving, it cannot impress God. It does not impress God. You know what impresses God? Eh? The only person that impresses God is Jesus. And when you are in Christ, God is impressed in you because you are in Christ. Outside Christ, you can never impress God. Amen. So thank God for all you do. They can never impress God. So trying to, uh, tr for me to tell it, for me telling somebody to give money before he can receive breakthrough, praise God, I am calling God a wicked God. I am calling God a bad God. In fact, I am calling God, in fact, any God that cannot bless you eh, without you didn't give anything, that God is a foolish God. I repeat, any God that cannot bless you eh, without you giving anything to him. That if I catch that God, I will stone that God. He's a dirty God. <laughs> just follow me. Let me just flow the way the Spirit of God is leading me tonight. I don't know. Maybe somebody needs this. Praise God. Let me just flow the way the Spirit of God is leading me tonight. Let me show you something in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. Just put your hand in that John. Let's go to Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians. Let me show you something in Ephesians. Leko baya bala bala gaya. Let me show you something in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. Le coco coco ya. Le coco. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Let's read verse 3. Say, Blessed be the God eh, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's, and I say, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our Father and is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now look at the next line, my point here. He said, Who had blessed us? With all spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Who has blessed us? He didn't say he's going to bless us. He didn't say he will bless us. He didn't say when we uh, give, he will bless us. He didn't say when we pray, he bless us. He didn't say when we fight, he will bless us. He said, who has already blessed us? He had already blessed us. Praise God. Who has already blessed us? Blessed be the God of our Father, Jesus Christ, who has already blessed us. So that's it that said... I have not realized that that is the case because, because you have given something, you think that it is your giving that will give you healing. Now, if God could give you salvation free of child, eh? if God could give you salvation free of child, you didn't pay anything for it. What are you going to pay to get maybe healing? Maybe, I don't know. Hallelujah. You know what you are believing God for. What are you going to pay to get it? If he could give you salvation 
salvation that is eternal. Because John 2 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only because so that to serve and believe in him will not perish but will have eternal life. So that alone should know that. That alone should make you to understand that you already have eternal life. Eternal life. It didn't say everlasting life. Sorry, it didn't say temporary life. It said eternal life. Glory to God. Now, he, he, we are read Ephesians now. He said, who had blessed us? He didn't say when you give. He didn't say when you pray. He didn't say when you fast. Are you getting up there now? So it is wrong. So I have to, talk, I, I have to rewind, rewind the mindset of that sister. Do you know what is repentance? The Bible says that the repentance and forgiveness of sin should be preached in his name. The word repentance in the Greek word means metanoia. Praise God. In other words, for, uh, for you to have a change of mind. To have a change of mind. You have to have a change of mind that, number one, you cannot save yourself. Praise God. You have to have a change of mind that you can never impress God. You have to change your mind that you, all you do, eh? That is not, it's not all you do that will make God to bless you. What, make it, what makes God to bless you is what Christ has done. It's not what you do. So you have to change your mind. That is repentance in the scripture. That is the Bible repentance. So I have to preach repentance to her and she changed her mind. So I actually change her mind. Receiving healing become natural thing. Praise God. I look at what I'm saying now. So it's not left for her if she has to appreciate God or appreciate the Son of God. Within her, uh, but we don't charge. Amen? That aside. Praise God. So, you see, if you come to verse, uh, where the rest of it, because of what uh, Nicodemus said to Jesus, he said, I know that you are a man of God. I've saw the miracle you are doing, that no man can do this thing except God be with him. Praise God. So, with those miracle too. You know why? Because God is not just with us. No. God is in us. Hallelujah. He said, as men that receive him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. So then he gave power to be called the sons of God. So when we received him, hallelujah, we became the sons of God, we became the children of God. Now you that is saying a believer can lose his salvation, I want to ask you, fine, you are, as a human being, you may disown your child, because you are a human being, you may disown your child, maybe that your child is a bad guy, you may decide to disown him. Praise God. But the truth is that your blood, eh, you can never remove your blood in his blood. Maybe you have a child as a human being and that child is a bad guy. You say, oh, this child he has caused a lot of shame. He has done a lot of evil to me. So I want to disown, I want to disown this my child. And you will finally disown the child. Please go. The truth is that you are just deceiving yourself. You know why? Because your blood is still in his DNA. He's still carrying your blood. He, he leaves this earth. He's still carrying your blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is even in the natural. Amen. Excuse me. That is even the natural. That is even biologically. It's carrying your blood. Amen. And because it's carrying your blood, you can never remove that blood from his blood. That is ma. And what about we that are sons of God? Praise God. We are born of the will of God. Praise God. Not of the will of man. Man, not of the blood of man, but of the will of God. That is it of the blood of Jesus. That's what we are born. Amen. Now, Let's go back to what Nicodemus said. There's a question Nicodemus asked Jesus. That question is a very intelligent question. Praise God. And we have something to learn from that question. Look at that question. Okay. Look at this. Till Jesus answered and said unto Nicodemus, Verily I say unto thee, except a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Praise God. So for you to be born again is for you to enter God's kingdom. Eh, is to be born again. What does it mean to be born again? Is to see Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That is what it means to be born again. Now look at verse 4. Look at the question of Nicodemus. I like the question of Nicodemus. Nicodemus said unto, unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Can a man enter his mother's womb the second time and be born? So if it is not possible for me to enter his mother's womb to be born the second time. Praise God, how can I? I believe you know it's not possible physically. Hallelujah. So if you said, uh, believe I can lose salvation because we are born of the Spirit of God. That's just, you are telling me that I will enter into the womb of Jesus Christ and be born. And you know it's not possible. It's not possible for Christ eh, to go to the cross again and die. Amen. It's not possible for Jesus to be buried again. He has been buried. Bible says he has been offered. Once and for all, for the sins of many. He has been offered once and for all, for the sins of many. Once and for all. Not uh, temporarily. No, once and for all, Christ was offered for the sins of many. 
Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Ya kato lo ba ya. Eze kato lo ma ya. Ita lo ba ya. Skado ya. Now, if you read, that, that is that. Now, look at verse, um, Jesus, uh, verse 5. Jesus said, Very lesson unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now, the word water, they, except a man is born of water, eh? which is the Spirit. Your guys were using water to explain what the Spirit is. That is why baptism of water is not born again. Somebody was saying, you are born again, you should not be baptized. Fine, if you are baptized, fine. But I want you to know that baptism of water is not even born again. Praise God. Born again is of the Spirit. He was using water to explain spiritual things. Hallelujah. He was using water to explain spiritual things. He was using water at what to explain to you like Jesus said, he said, on that great day, Jesus stood at that place and he cried with a loud voice. He said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water, which he was talking about the Holy Ghost. So, anyway, you see water in the Bible, he's talking about the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He's talking about the Holy Ghost. Because water does not give, even water gives salvation. Everybody are in, we are in some manner here in Europe, people are swimming. Praise God, since they are swimming, once they enter the river, they swim and come out. That just say they are born again. Praise God. Hallelujah. So if you have to you all go to the river, you all swim, you all come out, they are born again. No, baptism of water is no repentance. You remember that guy that died on the cross with Jesus? Amen. Uh, joy. Uh, good evening, man. God bless you, man. You remember that guy that died on the cross with Jesus? You all guys say, today you will be with me in paradise. He never baptized. Praise God. You know, the problem people have is that they are so. They are so mindful. We read it in Romans just now. They are so mighty, mindful of carnal things. Praise God. They are so mindful of carnal things and they are forgetting about the spiritual. Hallelujah. See, we are spiritual people. We are born of the Spirit of God. We are led of the Spirit of God. We are, we are led of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. So we are spiritual people. Take away carnality. Hallelujah. And be focused on the things of the Spirit. Now let me read verse... Um, Good evening, my sister. God bless you, man. Now, let me read the next verse. Verse. Look at verse uh, 6. You know, that is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Anyone that is born of the flesh is flesh, but who is born of the spirit is spirit. Glory to God. And we are born of the spirit. We are not born of the flesh. Hallelujah. We are born of the spirit of God because we are born again, and we are born of the spirit of God. Somebody shout, Amen. Okobala. Okobala. Escado ya ya ikalo ya. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Your word prevail. Your word prevail. Your word prevail. Your word prevail. Now, verse seven say, "Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again." Now, look at verse eight. He said, "The wind blow at where it listed, and that hear the sound thereof, but cannot stay where it cometh, and with and wither where it goeth." So, if everyone that is born of the Spirit of God. You see that now? This story is everyone that is born of the Spirit of God. So the born again man is the one that is born of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. And the will ask, eh, should the man go back to his mother's womb the second time and be born? Now, should we go back to the womb of the Holy Spirit and be born the second time? Hallelujah. That is why you see people, tomorrow they will come out for altar call. Next tomorrow they will come out for altar call. You can be only born again once. You cannot be born again two times. Hallelujah. You cannot be born again after you have here. Uh, this uh, preaching of condemnation, you have heard it, I heard it, I heard it. You are no longer sure whether you are safe. You are no longer sure. So, as a result of that, you are no longer sure whether you are safe or if you are not safe. So, as a result of that, eh, you, 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 you begin to come out, begin to come out. I don't understand. Praise God. Hallelujah. And Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ say, eh, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Praise God. He said, No one will be able to pluck them out of my hand. Why? Because my father who gave them to me is greater than all. Amen? So God is greater than all. God who gave eternal life is greater than all. The only way eh? See, if you are saved, eh? you are always saved. Amen? The only way you can never be saved is that you were never saved before. There is no way you can be born again and be or born again. It's not possible. Just like the way you cannot go back to the, your mother's womb the second time be born. You cannot be born again and be born again. Hallelujah. So, in the first place, when you see when we see people saying you can lose the baptism, we have to know what message did they hear in the first place. 
What message did they hear in the first place? Because the message you hear determine if you are really born again in the first place or not. The message you heard, hallelujah, determine, you know, I was talking to uh, a woman, one woman from, uh, which country is she from? I think for, what is it for Germany? I don't know. She's, uh, she said she's an atheist and she said, uh, and her name is Christian. So I said to her, you are an atheist, how come your name is Christian? He said, we used to go to church before, but now we don't no longer believe in Jesus. Praise God. Do you know why? Now, why I didn't tell her that you are still born again, whether you like it or not, is because in the first place, I didn't even know the message he heard. Because it is the message we heard that determines if you were born again before or if you are not born again. It is the message. But if truly you heard the message of Christ, eh? you heard the message of Christ, hey brother, you are safe forever. Just like you can never go to the womb of your physical parents and be born the second time. You can never go back to the womb of the Holy Ghost and be born the second time. God is not going to go back to the cross and die for your sins the second time. No, he has died for your sins once and for all. Hallelujah. So that, that will lead me to the book of Romans chapter 10. Let me to, let's see the message in the first place. What is the message? Praise God. Let's go to Romans chapter 10. Because of time. Let me jump to Romans chapter 10. Let's go to Romans chapter 10. Le kado bayada. Epe le kudaya. Le togo na galaya. Now, if you read from verse 1, Paul was praying for the Jews, for the children of Israel. Praise God. He said they are going about establishing their right on them. Let me all read it. Verse 1 says, Brethren, my heart desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them record that they ask thee for God. You see that? They say they ask thee for God. They can fast. They can pray. Praise God. They can say, I'm not here. You do all, all sorts of things. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But not according to knowledge. For they are be, look at verse 3 now. Say, for they are be ignorant of God's righteousness. And many of us, we are ignorant of God's righteousness. The truth is that if you know God's righteousness, you will not be able to think about if I will lose my salvation or not. So it starts by knowing what you heard in the first place. And it starts by knowing if you know what God's righteousness is. And in the last two days, I mean the last two days, we have seen that Abraham became righteous by faith. Let me say Abraham be believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And that was David described the man that is blessed. And the blessedness of the man that whom the Lord will impute righteousness to that work. So the man that is blessed is the man that is righteous to that work. That was why I David described it. Hallelujah. So we are blessed not because of any other thing. We are blessed because we are righteous with that work. So you have to understand in the first place, you became righteous or you became born again with that work. Praise God. So if you became born again or you became righteous without your work, hallelujah. So will your work not make you unborn again? Because it was not, it was not your work that made you to be born again in the first place. So how will your work now make you to be unborn again? Amen? Hope you are following Amazosia. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, he said, he, uh, Barapo said, he said, he said, they are ignorance of God's righteousness. That's what many people are. Many people are ignorant of uh, God's righteousness. They say, hey, don't wear your ring, don't do this, blah, blah, blah. What are you saying about? Hallelujah. Wake up. If you are the type that would love that, love that. If you are the type that not love makeup, it's fine. But these are not righteousness. Praise God. Your clothes is not righteousness. What you eat is not righteousness. What you wear is no righteousness. Whether you make up or not, it's no righteousness. Hallelujah. These are no righteousness. If these are the standard of righteousness, that is to say, uh, the coming of Christ is in vain. Hallelujah. It's in vain. In, um, uh, in Nigeria now, all those uh, terrorist groups, don't you see what they are wearing? They are not covering all, all their part of body. So they are righteous now. They are born again. For instance, the ex-men that are killing people now, I do not know covering their body. I do not do everything. But I know they want killing people. Praise God. So, these are no righteousness. So, uh, Brother Paul was explaining here. He said, the children of Israel, they, they are ignorant. They have zeal for God. They want to work for God. He said, but they are ignorant of the righteousness of God. They are ignorant of it. Praise God. They are ignorant of it. So, they are going about establishing their own righteousness. And the Bible says, when you go about establish your own righteousness, he said that your righteousness is a fitty rag before God. Hallelujah. Now, that, that's in verse, um, what verse are we now? Okay, verse 3 now. 
He said, he said, he said, he said they have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Romans 10, verse 3 now. They have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. They have not. Praise God. I want to beg you, my sister. I want to beg you, my brother. I want to beg you, my mother and my father. I want to beg you, submit yourself to the righteousness of God. Praise God. You can't save yourself. You can't help yourself. Hallelujah. If you can save yourself, it will not have come. Praise God. It is not, it's not the bad that. No. It's the bad thing. It's not the bad us. It's the bad thing. Hallelujah. It's the bad thing. It's not the bad us. Hallelujah. There's a song we sing. Forget about yourself. Let's, let's worship our God. Forget about yourself and look unto him. Praise God. When you look unto yourself, you, know, you will not see any good thing in yourself. Hallelujah. Because in him we know ourselves. Let say, in him we live and have our being. Praise God. In him we live and have our being. Hallelujah. He said, you have God little to them and you have overcome the world. He said, for greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So you want to know yourself. Look unto Jesus. Forget about yourself. Praise God. Forget about yourself. When you look at yourself, you will see your shortcomings. When you look at yourself, you will see your sin that you fell into. When you look at yourself, you will see all those things that are not good. You will never be good enough when you look at yourself. Hallelujah. You will always condemn yourself when you look at yourself. But when you look at Jesus, you will see yourself in Jesus. You know why? Because his righteousness has become our righteousness. His life has become our life. His holiness has become our holiness. I would say Jesus Christ is the righteousness. Sorry, Jesus Christ has been made unto us wisdom and righteousness. He has been made unto us holiness. Hallelujah. So I want to know who I am. I look unto Jesus. <laughs> the writer of Hebrews said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. It is a look at yourself. It is a look at your character. It is a look at your shortcoming. No, look at yourself. No, you know, you know, we think that a be born again is a matter of character modification. No, no, that is where we get you wrong. Hallelujah. That has not to be born again. Hallelujah. Common sense will tell you to have good character. But be born again doesn't have anything to do with your character. Hallelujah. No, it doesn't have anything to do with that. Being born again is about what Christ has done. And when you know what Christ has done, to living, what, uh, living the life of Christ will become natural to you. When you know what Christ has done in you, when you know what Christ is doing in you, and what he's doing through you, living the life of Christ, it just becomes natural. That's why Brother Paul said, he said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I do what I live. Yes, not I. So I am living now. It's not me that is living. Amen. It's not me that is living. He said, but, eh? He said, the life and I live right now, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I live by the faith of the Son of God. So the Son of God is the one who has faith. Somebody say, I don't have faith, so I don't have faith, so I don't have faith. When you say you don't have faith, you are saying you are not born again. When you are born again, you have faith. Because I live by the faith of the Son of God. The Son of God owns the faith, and the Son of God is me. Praise God. You already have all the faith in this world. Praise God, you already have all the holiness in this world. You already have all the righteousness in this world because our holiness and our righteousness and our faith is in us. Hallelujah, is in us. So we should not be like the children of Israel who were going back, establishing their own righteousness and then neglect the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Is somebody getting blessed tonight? Somebody getting blessed tonight? Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Leka boha. Leka boha. Praise God. He said he said they did submit yourself to the righteousness of God. Submit yourself to the righteousness of God. Submit yourself to the righteousness of God so that you can be effective for Jesus. So that you can be effective for the Lord. Hallelujah. So that it will be said concerning us. These are the men who turn the world upside down. Praise God. Did you see the, how the apostles live? Hallelujah. There was something they know. Hallelujah. There was something they know. And what did they know? Did you see Paul? Praise God. You know Paul. Amen. He was the most notorious guy. Hallelujah. He was very notorious. Praise God. He was very, hallelujah, before he became poor. Amen. He was a bad guy. He was a notorious guy. Did you see him? Praise God. But when you look at it now, he's the one that had the highest revelation. Hallelujah. Concerning the things of Jesus. Paul, he understood the righteousness of God. Look at the epistles. Most of the letters there in the epistles are the letters of Paul. Praise God. This was a man that used to kill Christian. That used to kill the unbeliever. Hallelujah. But when this thing dawned on him, he understood what righteousness is. Hallelujah. He was a Jew. He brought a Jew of Jew. Amen. Concerning the law, he was very zealous. He was zealous of the law. He thought he was working for God. And that is what many people do today. When you are zealous, eh, eh, according to the law, 
And when you are looking at yourself and you think you are working for God, my dear, you are not working for God. You are working for yourself. Or you are working for your stomach. Allah Bosha. You see that now? How do you know you are working for God? When you are preaching the gospel of Jesus. That is when you are working for God. Forget about all this thing. You are preaching the gospel. No. If it is not about Jesus, you are not preaching the gospel, sir. Amen. You see, Paul. You see, you see the way the, 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 the apostles live, live their life. Praise God. They live their life. Praise God. You see, you see a lot of this because they understood the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. See, when you look at yourself, you, you, you condemn yourself. You condemn yourself. And when you condemn yourself, praise God, you cannot bring out the potential that God has deposited inside you. You cannot manifest all that God has bestowed in you. Praise God, you cannot. Praise God, because you are condemning yourself. It is not who said that is condemning you right now. It is you that is condemning yourself. Hallelujah. And it says there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. I, I will, I, I'm going to leave here. I, I will come back here again. Praise God. What, um, what, I, I will just show you some few chapters in this Roman chapter 10 because of time. Praise God. I will just show you some few chapters. So, for, some few chapters. Look at verse 6 of that Roman chapter 10. He said, But the righteousness which is of faith, speak on this way, say not in the heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above. So when you are saying you will be unborn again, you can lose your salvation. You are saying you want to go and break Christ down again the second time. That's what you are saying. Look at verse 8. He said, but what's yet? The word is named the man, even the word of faith. Now let's go to verse 10. Eh? Let's go to verse 9. Verse 9 from verse 9. Now you see that. Remember I said, when you are saying you will lose your salvation, you lose your salvation. In the first place, you will know if you are saved. Because knowing if you are saved in the first place will determine, let's know if you are losing your salvation. Because once you are saved, you can never lose your salvation. And what you hear determine if you are saved. For instance, I come here, I preach about prosperity. Eh? And I say, come and give your life to Jesus. My dear, you are not saved. You know what you just did now? You gave your life to prosperity. It was not Jesus you gave your life to. Because that was what I heard. That was what you preached. That was what I preached. That was what you heard. So that was what you gave your life to. I just come in and I preach about demon, 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 demon in your father's ass, which is not the message. And I say, at the end, I not say, come and give your life to Christ. So, Amen. You know what you just did now? It was demon you gave your life to. And that is why they are doing deliverance for you. Deliverance for you. you can never be delivered. Because what you heard is what you manifest. And that is why you are manifesting demon. You will be lowering on the ground of a snake. Praise God. Because you didn't even hear. Because what you hear determine the spirit that will be in operation. Praise God. When I talk about Christ, eh, the power of Christ manifests. When I talk about demon, seduce spirits. What the Bible called seduce spirits will be in manifestation. So what you hear. When I talk about your father's ass, when I talk about your pocket, talk about all those things that are not the gospel. Eh? And I say, come and give your life to Christ. You came out. You didn't hear about Christ. So which Christ are you giving your life to? I just preach about prosperity. So you are giving your life to prosperity, not Christ. I just talk about the demons in your father's ass. You are, if there is one anyway, praise God. It was deep. And I say, come and give your life to Christ. You, are, you just gave your life to demon, not Christ. So what you hear in the first place determine if you are really born again. But if you hear the message of Christ, praise God, you hear the message of Christ and you are born again, you are born again forever. One save is forever saved. I repeat it. One save is forever saved. I'm saying it on air all over the world. One save is forever saved. I lie not. Nothing can take you and for the nothing can take you away from the end of Jesus. He says, I like quoting that scripture. He says, My father. Who gave them to me is greater than all. No one is able to take them out of my hand. No one. You cannot even take yourself away from the end of Jesus. You cannot take yourself away because you are one. You are a man. Say no man. You cannot. Forget whether you are still going to church or not. You cannot. Even if you think you are no longer a Christian. But you, you once heard the gospel and you are saved. You cannot. You are still saved. So you better start using what you have already. Don't waste your time again. You are still saved. You are still born again my friend. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go. Now look at verse 9 now. Verse 9 says now, let's take over verse 9 of uh, Romans 10. He said that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth that the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So what I want meant you to be saved is if you, be, if you confess with your mouth, eh, eh, you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Christ from the dead, you are saved. And once you are saved, you will not lose it. Now look at verse 10. For with the heart man believe unto what righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So when you believe, 
Praise God, you have become righteous and you are saved. Now look at verse 11. Now. Say for the scripture says, Whosoever believe on him shall not be ashamed. Oh, glory to God. You know, don't let people deceive you. Say, Jesus Christ is coming you. When he come in, uh, will you be ashamed? Will you, let, let, let. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is coming. We are happy. You know why? Because we believe in him. And because we believe in him, we will never be ashamed. Praise God. We are not ashamed. Praise God. But Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to them that believe. First to the, uh, to, to the Jews and also to the Greek. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I am not ashamed. Why will I be ashamed? Why? If somebody could, should come and preach something to collect your money from your pocket, somebody should come and preach condemnation to you, somebody come and preach demon to you, I don't know what ashamed. Is it me that will not be ashamed to preach the gospel of Christ? Is you that know we are ashamed to preach the gospel of Christ? We are not ashamed. Praise God. We are not ashamed. Oh, glory to God. Type it. Say, I am not ashamed. We are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. We are not ashamed. Praise God. We are not ashamed. And that is why you need to preach the gospel to wherever you, wherever you are. Don't tell me, you, I am not I'm not the pastor. Man, you don't know, say it is pastor that will preach the gospel. No. It didn't say the gospel. It said they that believe. Amen. We preach this gospel. This gospel. We preach. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me begin. I have many to say. Praise God. But time will not permit me. So maybe tomorrow I continue from there. Now look at. It says for with the arts man believe. Now uh, verse 11 says for the scripture says. Whoso believe in him will not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For they say Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Now look at verse 11, 13. Say for whoso, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever, whether you are white, black, blue, I don't care. Amen. Call upon the name of the Lord. You hear the gospel, say so you are saved. Now, let's take note of, look at verse 14 now. Verse 14 now is very critical. Take note of verse from, from verse 14 of Romans chapter 4. Take note of verse 14. He said, Add then shall they call on him. Remember, he said, Whosoever that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Now, he said, Add then shall they call on him whom, whom they have not believed. So you have to believe first. Eh? Believe like God before you call on him. And how shall they believe on whom they have no heir? And how shall they hear without the preacher? He said, how can they believe on whom they have no heir? Who is the whom there? It is a it. It is a it. Sorry, it is a it. It is a whom. So the whom there is Jesus. So how can you believe you are not heir about Jesus? So when I come and preach any other thing to you, I'll come and tell you about business, which is not bad. We have business school. They are good. God bless their heart. But that is not the gospel. Hallelujah. So when I come and preach any other thing to you, I call it the gospel. I say, come on, give that to Christ. What are you giving your life to? You didn't hear about him. He said, I can, how can they believe in whom they have not hear? So the believing is in the whom you hear, you hear. So if I come here, I just come to you. I start talking about myself. I was in Germany the other day. I was in DC. I was in this star. I was there. I was there. I talk about my talk about my talk about myself. And at the end, I say, come on, give that to Christ. Which life are you giving your life to? He said, how? How can they believe in whom they have not heard? So he started about hearing about the whom, which is Jesus. So it is the hearing of the whom, Jesus, that brings a bad faith in your heart. Hallelujah. That is what brings a bad faith in your heart. The hearing of the whom. That's why when you go to verse 17 or that same scripture, it says, faith come in by hearing. And hearing the word of God. But the original Greek word said, hearing the word of Christ. So faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of Christ. So you don't have faith. So when, it's when you hear the word of Christ, faith will be released in your heart. And faith, when faith is released in your heart, you believe. Then you start confessing that I am saved forever. Praise God. You believe. So it is about the own. So in case you are here, you are not born again, or you have not heard the gospel, you are just hearing the gospel now. And when you are hearing the gospel now, when you believe it, faith is released in your heart, and you are saved. And you are saved. So it starts with the message. So when somebody tells you that he lost his salvation, you have to investigate the person first. What did he hear in the first place? What did he hear? Did he hear about Jesus? If you truly hear about Jesus, praise God. He's saved and he's saved forever. Glory to God. Glory to God. And, and in verse 11 now, uh, uh, is it verse 11? No. Verse uh, 14. He said, I shall call on him in whom they have not believed. And how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So how will they hear without a preacher? So that is why we are preaching it right now. Amen. When you preach it, 
you hear, we are preaching about the um. We are preaching about the um. Who is Jesus? So when you hear about Jesus, you are safe. And you are safe, you are safe forever. So it starts with the um. Praise God. Hallelujah. That is why a man that is truly safe will just know that he's safe. You will not be asking, will I go to air? Will I not go to air? What are you going to do? What are you going to do there? Praise God. What are you going to do there? So that you will not go to air. That was why your Christ went to air. He has gone there for your sake. You ain't going there anymore. Praise God. You ain't going there anymore. So it's about the um. It's about the um. Hallelujah. It's about the um. It's about what the um. Who do you hear about the first place? Who do you hear about the first place? Praise God. He said, I the shape preacher, just be sent. You see that? And I say, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For as I see a Lord who had believed our report. And that is true. They have not all obeyed the gospel. Even as I am preaching it now, not everybody that will believe the gospel. But in the prayer that all, everybody believes. So it is when you hear the gospel that truly that you are saved. Hallelujah. Let me show you something in First Corinthians. First Corinthians. Yes, sir. Koloma ya gagalogo ya. Skertel. So it is about the um. The um. That is what brings a bad suggestion. It's about the um. Oh, glory to God. Chapter mm, 3. Mm, mm, mm. Let's go to Second Corinthians, chapter 3. Praise God. Are you still with me? Amen. Now look at verse. Um, oh, co, co, co. Yeah, let's take it from verse three. Verse three. He said, For as much as he am manifestly declared. To the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. With the, take note of that word, with the spirit of the living God. Not with ink. No. You were born again by the spirit of the living God. Not the spirit of the dead God. But the spirit of the living God. The spirit of the living God. Amen. Not in tables of stone, but in flaming tables of the art and and such trust have we through Christ to God world. Now look at it. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Somebody say, my sufficiency is of God. God is my sufficiency. God is my all sufficiency. My sufficiency is not in myself. It's not in my law. It's not in the law. It's not in my character. No, it's in my sufficiency is of God. Hallelujah. Is of God. My sufficiency is aware of God. Now look at uh, verse 6. Now he said, who also has made us able minister? He didn't say he's going to make us. No, he said he has already made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, for the Spirit giveth light. You know, people quote that creature, the letter killeth, the letter killeth. When the Bible talks about the letter killeth, it's talking about the Old Testament. The Old Testament killeth. Amen. He call it, the Bible call it the administration of death. The administration of death. He said, but... The Spirit giveth life. Hallelujah. Let me all turn to Romans, Romans chapter 8. Let me just show you one more thing there as I begin to ram us. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Praise God. If you have contribution, you can you are free to call in. Or you have questions, you are free to call in, or you can tap it in the comment box. Now let's go on to Romans chapter 8. I begin to round up now. Praise God. I begin to round up. Lema go 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 yaba laba ya takado shadaya be. Scare your girl, let Google go. Romans, 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 Romans chapter 8. Okay. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Romans, 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 Romans chapter 8. Look at what he says in Romans chapter 8. Take note of that word. He said, The spirit kill uh, the letter kill it. If you read from verse, you talk about fleshy tables of the earth, not written with ink. Praise God. I you not talk about uh, 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 fleshy tables. I you not talk about the spirit of the living God. Now, let's see. It's clearly in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Remember I said the letters that kill it 
is talking about the works of the law. Praise God. Trying to be saved by your own power. Amen. That is the letter that kills it. When you are trying to save yourself, eh, you will kill yourself. <laughs> it's death for you. It's death sentence. Praise God. You are trying to save yourself. It's death sentence. You are killing yourself already. But he said, but the Spirit giveth life. Hallelujah. I have life. Hallelujah. He said, as men that receive him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. He said, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. So we have life in abundance. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Amen. Now look at verse uh, Romans chapter 8. Are you still with me? God bless you. Thank you all for staying with me. I really appreciate it and I believe God is blessing you. Hallelujah. I believe you are getting it. Amen. He said, Romans chapter 8 from verse 1. Look at what he said. He said, there is therefore now no condemnation to to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Praise God. There is therefore now what? No condemnation to them which are in where? In Christ Jesus. So because you are in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation for you. I like the way the BBE translation put it. It said, those who are in Christ Jesus will not be judged as sinners. There is a judgment for the sinners. And their judgment is for rejecting Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you. I'm really blessed. I'm glad you are blessed, man. Hallelujah. But it says, we that are in Christ Jesus will not be judged as sinners. So there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Those who are in Christ Jesus can never be judged as sinners. Hallelujah. They can never be judged. Why? Because we are in Christ Jesus. Can never be judged as sinners. Amen? Can never be judged as sinners. The judgment you are going to receive is the judgment of reward. And that judgment of reward is for those who preach the gospel. Hallelujah. That is why me and a few of my friends, like Automac, praise God, we have made of our mind, praise God, to preach the gospel the way it is. Amen. Because on the last day, we know that we are giving account to Jesus. Amen. We are giving account to Jesus. So likewise, you also, when you preach the gospel, preach it the way Christ said you should preach it because you are going to give account to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. But I said that you will not be judged as sinners. You will still be in heaven, but you will be given reward for the work of ministry for how you preach the gospel. Amen. Now, in um, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, what did he say? Ephesians chapter 12, verse 11, he said, and, and, and he gave some pastors or prophets, evangelists, teachers. See, the, the major work of the prophet is not to, to prophesy. The major work of the prophet is to teach you how to prophesy. It's not to prophesy for you, how to prophesy for you. No, the major work of the prophet is to teach you how to, how to prophesy too. The pastor, evangelist, teacher is to teach you who you are in Christ. So that you will not do the work of ministry. So our work as a pastor, evangelist, teacher, prophet is to teach you. When we teach you, you do the work of ministry. Hallelujah. Let me leave that for another time. Amen. Now, but my point here is that, he said, those who are in Christ Jesus will not be judged as sinners. That is what it means. For there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Because you are in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation for you. So, if Jesus said there is no condemnation for you, my friend, stop condemning yourself, okay? Stop condemning yourself because there is no condemnation for you. Why? Because you are in Christ Jesus. You are in Christ Jesus. Somebody shout it, write it, write it for you. Write it, let me see. Say I, say, I am in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, the next line says, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, if you want to understand after the flesh, you have to read. That's why when you read your Bible, read it contextually. I mean, read everything. Praise God. Because in the beginning when the Bible was reading, the Bible was not written with chapter and verses. It was people that put chapter and verses so that we can understand it very well. It can be easy for us to assess. Hallelujah. So when you read from verse uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, eh, to 8, you talk about, when you talk about the flesh, you're talking about the law. Who walk not after the flesh means when you are trying to be by yourself, who is trying to keep the law, who is trying to obey the law, who is trying to be justified by the law. When you are trying to be justified by the Lord, you are walking after the flesh. Hallelujah. I am a Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I like that. I mean, hallelujah. So, now, so when you are, you are, you, how do you know a man that is in the flesh? A man in the flesh is not a man that falls into sin. No, a man in the flesh is a man that is to be right, that is trying to be righteous by his own power. And when you try to be righteous by your power, the Bible says you are in the flesh. Hallelujah. And when you are in the flesh like that, amen. The Bible says you are condemned. But we in Christ Jesus, the Bible says we can never be condemned. Hallelujah. We can never be condemned. See, there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but afterwards the spirit. We walk in the spirit. We live in the spirit. Hallelujah. We are spirit people. Amen. Not the one that you do in church uh, when the choir minister want to watch, uh, want to sing. You say, let's be 
uh, in the mundo, let's be in the spirit. No, you have already, you have always been in the spirit. Hallelujah. Because you are born of the spirit. You are already in the spirit. Praise God. You have been in the spirit. Praise God. And you will remain in the spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, if how do I know that he was talking about the local verse two? Now he said, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. So I now have a new law. And the law that I have now is the law of the spirit of life. He said, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. I am free from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, so now, type is I am free from the law of sin and death. Amen. The law of sin and death is talking about the practice, the works of the Old Testament, trying to be justified by yourself. Hallelujah. They are the law of sin and death. But we that put our faith in Jesus, hallelujah, we are free from the law of sin and death. We are now operate in the life of the Spirit of Christ in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, for what the law could not do, in that was we were quit through the flesh, God said in his also in the likeness of sinful flesh, and sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law, take note of that verse 8, and I say that the righteousness of the law may be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. You know, when we preach something like somebody say, but Jesus Christ said, but Jesus Christ said, I have not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Praise God. See, if you don't know something, it's good to quiet than to show your ignorance publicly. Jesus Christ said, I have not come to destroy the law, but if he didn't say we have not come, he said, ah, that is to say he is the one to fulfill the law. And he has fulfilled the law for us. And when he fulfilled the law for us, look at what happened. That's what we read just now. That the righteousness of the law when he fulfilled the law, the righteousness of the law may be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So because we walk after the spirit, hallelujah, because we believe in God, we walk after the spirit. And because we walk after the spirit, the righteousness of the law has been fulfilled in me. Because I could not fulfill it myself, Jesus has to come to fulfill it for me. Hallelujah. So I am free from the law. Hallelujah. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. He called it the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. How will you be walking in the law of sin and death? Praise God. Amen. How will you be walking in the law of sin and death? Let me just show you one more scripture as I round up. Amen. Galatians 6 verse 16. Let me just show you one scripture there as I round up. Galatians 6 verse 16. Let's go there. Galatians 6 verse 16. Oh, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. Oh, glory to God. I am free from the law of sin and death. Oh, oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Look at verse 16. He said, as many, uh, uh, Galatians 6, verse 16. Look at what he said now. He said, and as many as walk according to the rule. My word say rule. And my Bible say rule. But uh, some Bible will say law. Praise God. Uh, Galatians 6 verse 16. Okay. As men as walk according to the, this rule, peace be on them and mercy upon them, Israel God. From henceforth, let no man trouble you. Okay, it's verse 17. Now he said, From henceforth, let no man trouble you. Trouble me. For I bear in my, for I bear, for I bear, eh, in my body the mark of Lord Jesus Christ. I bear in my body the mark of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So don't let anybody trouble me again. Don't let anybody tell you that you are not righteous enough. Don't let anybody tell you that you are not holy enough. Don't let anybody tell you that uh, you can never make it. Don't let anybody tell you that you can never go to heaven. Don't let anybody tell you that. that. Let no man trouble you. Why? Because you bear in your body the mark of the living God, which is Christ. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. See, the grace of God, Jesus Christ, is in your spirit. Hallelujah. You see that? So, we are free from the law of sin and death. I am free from the Lord of sin and death. Sin will no longer have dominion over you. Amen. Sin can never have dominion over you. Do you know why? Because you are not under the law. No, you are not under the law. You are not under the law. Amen. Hallelujah. You are not under the law, but you are what? You are under grace. Amen. Let me quickly show you one more scripture in Galatians 2. Galatians 2. Galatians 2 verse 20 to the end. I read it now. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, what? Well, nevertheless, what? I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Somebody shout and say, Christ liveth in me. Hallelujah. She shout, How can a man that Christ live in eh, go to hell? How can a man that Christ live in eh, 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 lose his salvation? I don't understand. He's, Christ, he's the salvation. Praise God. He's the salvation. Amen. So how can you lose it? Amen. It's not possible. Amen. It's not possible. Somebody say it's not possible. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Where did I stop now? 
Okay. He said, Christ live it in, in me. He said, For I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ live it in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Hallelujah. When we read this, it says, Why we were uh, why we were ungodly? Why we were ungodly? Why we were criminals? Christ commended his love on us. It was only when we were good, it was only when we were bad. Eh? That was when God gave us his love. You say, but I was not bad then. Praise God. You are bad. Any man without Christ is a bad man. Amen. You are good because you have Christ. Outside Christ, you are a bad man. Amen. In Christ, you are a good man. You are a righteous man. You are a holy man. Amen. Amen. Look at verse 20. I like verse 21. I mean, verse 21. You will like it too. Verse 21. He says, I do not frustrate, I do not frustrate the grace of God. He said, Brother Paul says, we should not frustrate the grace of God. Now, how do you frustrate the grace of God? Look at the next line. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ's death is in vain. So when you are trying to be righteous by the law, when you are trying to be justified by the law, when you are trying to be holy by the law or by your own works, eh, or to make heaven by your own works, Bible say, and eh, you are putting Christ's death in vain. And I know you don't want to do that. Praise God. You don't want to do that, but you are, that is what you are doing indirectly. Praise God. But why? Because eh, when you put your trust in God, you will not frustrate the grace of God. So we for, if somebody frustrates the grace of God, you don't want to fall into sin. Sin is no good. Hallelujah. Somebody that falls into the grace of God, somebody that lies. Lies is no good. It's not somebody that falls into the case. That is not frustrating the grace of God. Amen. Somebody that frustrates the grace of God is somebody that rejects Christ. He's saying, I will go save myself by myself. That is the person that is frustrating the grace of God. So anytime you fall into sin, don't let anybody deceive you that you are frustrating the grace of God. You are not frustrating the grace of God. He's able to save you to the uttermost parts. He's able. More than able. Praise God. So we don't frustrate the grace of God. He said, he said for if I don't come by the Lord, then Christ's dead is even. Right? Then they don't come by the law. Praise God. So when you are saying, I don't come by the law, you are putting Christ's dead even. I am frustrating the grace of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen, 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 amen. I believe somebody has been blessed tonight. Somebody has been blessed tonight. Somebody has been blessed tonight. Oh, glory to God. I really appreciate you all for joining. Amen, amen. I really appreciate you all for joining. Praise God. Your journey. If you have a question so far in what we have discussed, you are free to ask your question. You are free to ask your question. If somebody was actually calling in there, but I was still teaching then that was like no pick. Praise God. But if you have a question, you can drop the question in the comment box. Or if you feel like calling in to the video, you are free now to call in. Pastor Mike, you are still online. If you have contribution, you are free to call in too. God bless you. God bless you all. God bless you all for joining. Uh, Prophet Melody, thanks for joining. Uh, Jeffrey Lewis, thanks for joining. Equa Ajayi, thanks for joining. God bless you. Sandra, thanks for joining, ma. Um, Mimi, Dave, thanks for joining. Iyamu Mike, thanks for joining. Pastor Iyamu Mike. Uh, Kelly E, thanks for joining my good friend Reverend God. We thanks for joining. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Progress Eribo, Tire Lucky, thanks for joining you all. Good evening, pretty, pretty Lily Emmy, thanks for joining. I love your name, praise God. Mercy Cool, thanks for joining. God bless you, ma. Uh, Kelly Johnson, thanks for joining, bro. God bless you. Good evening, Joy Enogama, thanks for joining, sister. God bless you, ma. Ogiege oh, Grace, thanks for joining, ma. Thanks for joining, thanks for joining, thanks for joining. Um, oh, Pastor Bright, God bless you. Uh, Idag Minita, thanks for joining, ma. God bless you, ma. God bless you. KV Kelly, thanks for joining, bro. It's been a while. Uh, MC, bro, thanks for joining. Thank you all for joining. Fito Moroge, thanks for joining, my hello. Uh, Ivy Okorobo, thanks for joining me. God bless you. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, hallelujah. Praise God, amen. Marvelous, marvelous. Thank for joining. Just worship God with me. It will not go well. Thank for joining. Nancy, only thank for joining. Oh, Tarobo, amen. Thank for joining. Oh, Kobaya, Sunday, Kevin, thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. Uh, Emmanuel Tiduku, thanks for joining, Reverend Sir. Ari Boss, thanks for joining. Thank you all for joining. Yes, worship God. I want to pray with you if you are sick in your body. If you don't have a question, no problem. I believe you understand it. Praise God. I want to tell you that you are saved forever. That you are forever. If truly you heard the gospel of Jesus, you are saved forever. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me pray with you. Let me pray with you. Let me pray with you. While I pray, let's take this song. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because you are God. There is no like you. There is none to be commented to you. Thank you for your love towards us. Thank you for your love towards us. Thank you for your love towards us. Father, King of glory, I pray for my audience and I pray for as many that will watch this video later. I decree and declare that the eyes of their mind be open in the name of Jesus, that they may know who they are in Christ, what they have in Christ, and what Christ is doing to them. Let the eyes of their mind be open in the name of Jesus. They will grow in wisdom, they will grow in knowledge, they will grow in power, they will grow in minds in the name of Jesus. I declare and declare they are no longer condemned in the name of Jesus. I declare and declare that nobody will lay charge against them because they are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. They are what you have called them, they are what you have called them, they are what you have given them, they have it, they are what uh, you call them, they have what you say they have in the name of Jesus. And I decree and I declare that as many that are sick in their body right now, I command that pain to go in the name of Jesus. There's somebody watching me, you have pain in your waist, in your waist, just lay your hand back there right now, I declare in the name of Jesus, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I command that pain in that waist, disappear right now in Jesus' name. Amen. That pay is gone. That pay is gone. Leko bayama sagadoho ebele katoya abala. There's somebody here. Uh, you have been having uh, some uh, skin disease, and that thing has been giving you problem. You have tried some medicine and some cream, but it's not going right now. Praise God. Jesus Christ heal all sicknesses. Amen. Skin disease is a sickness, oh Lord. By the name above every other name, I command that skin disease to disappear right now. Disappear right now. Disappear right now. Disappear right now. In the name of Jesus. It's gone and it's gone forever. It's gone and it's gone forever. Oh, glory to God. 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 Wherever you are sick in your body, the hand of God rests upon you right now. You are here from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet in the name of Jesus. Just get up right now. What you cannot do before, begin to do then. If you cannot walk before, get up and begin to walk. If you cannot see, begin to see. If you cannot hear, 